This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. I bought the very first broken Xbox Series S on eBay to see if I could fix it. So let's get it torn down and see what's wrong. Actually, just as I'm looking at the ports here, I can see the HDMI port is faulty, but I don't know if there's anything else wrong. This definitely has been taken apart before. That sticker's been removed. This sticker's been removed. So someone's had this apart. So who knows what else we'll find once we get inside. And this screw is almost totally stripped out. Let's see if we can get it out. I'm using a T8, which is the size of these. I'm just gonna press in very hard as I turn. Come on. It's almost going. There we go. Need to be careful not ooh, to do that. Come on. That's in there very tight. I think we got it. Okay, got it. Hopefully there's no more of those. And the good news is that it looks like none of these are stripped out and they're all there. Now I'll switch to a T10 bit and remove all the green screws. Now with the green screws out, we can remove the top cover. That's not how I wanted that to go, but oh well. So far, everything's looking good. Now let's remove all the rest of these screws on the bottom. We need to strip this completely down to the motherboard in order to replace that HDMI port. For any of you who might be new around here, my name is Steve and I believe in repair. I believe that it's way better to try and fix something instead of just throwing it away to buy something new. I make videos trying to fix broken items in the hopes to inspire you to think twice before you throw something away and maybe give it another chance and try and fix it before you toss it out and buy something new. Now with all those boards and screws removed, we can flip it over and start taking the guts out of the inside. Now with all that stuff removed, we have great access to the HDMI port. Unfortunately, there's no place to buy these HDMI ports right now. So I'm gonna check out all the other HDMI ports for the other consoles that I have and see if I can make one of those work. So I'm gonna first remove this old defective HDMI port. Then I'll see if any of the other ports that I have will fit this board. To remove this, I'll be using a hot air soldering station to heat up the solder and melt it. And then the port will drop right out the bottom. And this is the board with that HDMI port removed. Everything looks nice and clean. We didn't tear any of the pads off, which is good. Let's compare that port with some of the ports I have just laying around. So this is the port for the Xbox Series S. This is the port for the Xbox One X. This is the port for the Xbox One S. Unfortunately, these ports are really not that close to this one. And also, unfortunately, Microsoft does not provide any parts to anybody. So this is a very cheap part and would be a super easy fix if I could just get the part that I needed. But since I can't, I got to see if I can find some other port that will work. Next, I'm going to compare HDMI ports from all the series of PS4s and see if we can find one of those that might work. So these are all PS4 HDMI ports and they're just too short. This is a very long port. So these ones, I can't really even make those work. This one right here is even from the PS5, and this one is also similar to the PS4. So all of the PS4 HDMI ports won't work. I think I've got one more here from the original Xbox One. Let's check that one out. Okay, and here we go. Actually, this one, we might be able to make that work. Let's set it on the board and see how it lines up. So that's how it lines up there. We have it. Okay, I think we can make this one work because it will fit right in there. The pins on the motherboard look like they'll match up perfectly with the pins on the port. So I think I'm gonna install this port and then it definitely is not as long as the, the port that I took out, but I think maybe we can make that work. So I'm gonna get this port installed and then we'll see what we have to do to make sure that the HDMI cable will plug in once it's installed into the console. Now that I have that fully installed, I'm gonna take a look under my microscope and see how well those pins line up and if it looks like it's gonna fit on the board properly. 
and here we go. Yeah, I think these pins are gonna work. They're not totally aligned properly right now, but unfortunately these pins actually are, some of them are bent a little bit, so it's not gonna look the best once we get it soldered on, but it's gonna work just fine. And we'll have to move these over just a little bit, but I think this is gonna work fine. So I'm gonna get these all soldered on. First, I'm gonna add some flux. That'll be the liquid you see me put on these, and then I'll go through with my iron and solder each of these pins down to the pads on the motherboard. All right, and we've got all of these little pins soldered onto the board correctly. There's a few things I could have done a little bit better. Let me know down in the comments what you see that I should do better. I'll go through after I'm done filming this and fix some of the little problems, but let me know what you see down in the comments. So now I have the HDMI port replaced, but as I said earlier, it does not fit in here like the original fit in. So I got to see if I can fit it into the case in a way that'll make it so the HDMI cord can plug in. The only way I can do that is to put it together enough to test that then we'll get it started up and see if there are any other problems. Of course, I wouldn't forget to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. And there we go. Okay, so let's see how this fits in as is and see what we need to modify. So you can see the problem we have here is the port is kind of pushed way back inside the case, even though it's right up to the edge right here. The old port is extra long, so it will stick all the way out to the edge of this case. I'm gonna try and plug an HDMI cord into this and see what happens. It's almost long enough, but not quite. Now, the other option I do have is I could hollow out this case a little bit to make any standard HDMI cable fit in here, but I really don't wanna do damage to the case, so I think I'm just gonna take an HDMI cable like this one and just cut off a bunch of this plastic or at least slim it down so then I can get it to fit right in there. Okay, we've gotten a good amount of length on this HDMI cable now, so I'm gonna plug it in and see if it's long enough to really fit in there and get a good connection now. Okay, and here we go. Whoa, that actually, that might work. So I'm gonna get the rest of this console put back together. Then we'll test this and see if the HDMI cable will work. So it's all back together and time to test. Before I test it, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is one of the best places to order your custom printed circuit boards. They have a website which is super easy to use and you can do all your ordering right from their website. They make very high quality printed circuit boards. They're easy to work with and they ship out fast. They only charge $2 to one to four layer PCBs and assembly is free. And another great thing about JLC PCB is you can go right to their website and get a free quote on your order. If you register right now, you can get a free $18 new user coupon that you can save and use whenever you'd like. I'll put a link down in the description to claim that coupon. Now let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, here we go. Yes, we fixed it. So even though this fix isn't ideal since I have to shave down the HDMI cable, this is about as good as I can do since I can't get the correct HDMI port for this system. If you like this video, I think you'll like my Xbox Series S playlist. I'll put that up on your screen now. So come hang out with me over there and see all the other videos I made about the Xbox Series S. Thank you so much to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching it and I hope you have a good one.